Okay, so just before we make a start, um, everyone make sure please that you are set to active speaker on, uh, on your device so that uh, when myself or Jen are speaking, we'll, 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 we'll be the main active speakers. Uh, you can unmute yourself if you'd like to ask questions. Um, please, please unmute yourself and, and ask questions. Otherwise, you can use the chat function. Um, I'll be keeping an eye on the on the chat function throughout. So fire away any questions you have there. Okay, so we're going to make a start. Um, welcome everyone and, and thanks for tuning in, uh, whether you're tuning in live or whether you're watching this after the fact. We um, we really appreciate it. Our, uh, obviously, this is our more than an athlete portion of our Blues From Home program that we've been running every uh, Sunday night. Uh, tonight's guest is FDBA Finance Officer Jennifer Flannery. Jen, thanks for joining us tonight. Oh, couldn't hear you there, Jen. Have you got your mic on? Yep. Yeah, yeah. Oh, yep. Can you hear me? Yep, you're back. Yep, all good. Um, so Hi, everyone. <laughs> Thanks, Jen. So tonight's uh, tonight's topic is uh, it's pretty broad, but we'll say finance for lack of a better sort of a description, Jen. Um, we're we're, we're going to talk a little bit about, I guess, some some really really basic um, finance things that that we all need to learn. That that again, our kids maybe aren't learning in school. I know I didn't learn a lot about finance um, while I was in school unless I specifically um, studied a subject on that. We didn't learn how to put together budgets. You know, a lot of us, you know, from year eight or nine onwards were starting to get casual or part-time jobs and probably weren't equipped with the skills to be able to properly manage um, any any income that we were getting and, and preparing for tax time and things like that. So obviously our parents do a great job of teaching us that, but uh, we're really lucky to have you here tonight. Um, and again, with us as a part of our Frankston basketball team, um, willing to pass on some of your tips and knowledge that you have. So thank you. Um, and yeah, we'll, we'll, we'll get started with, uh, with the first question. If you're, if you're ready to go, Jen. Okay, so the first question that came through, uh, Jen, was how important is it um, to save money even at a young age? It's important to save money at any age, as we know. But as a young age, depending on your age, obviously, we all need to think in the future of, are we going to want to buy our own car? Are we going to want to move out of home and live with our girlfriends or live with our friends? Um, are we going to want to travel for any of those purposes? Yeah, you have to save money. It doesn't just appear. So it's very, very a, a good thing is to put money aside. If you have a car, you're going to have to pay registration. If you're going to move, you're going to have to have a deposit for bonds. So there is never a reason not to save. It depends on what your goals are. It might be a car. It might be a travel. It might be, you know, an outfit that you've always wanted. But there is never a young enough age to save. Even if you're five, six, seven years old and get pocket money, it's good to put it aside. For those reasons yep perfect yeah absolutely i agree and um i think it's um yeah it's probably something i wasn't taught very well i mean no disrespect to my mum and dad but i probably just didn't listen to their advice so it's good to hear it from a professional as well sometimes and um even some of our younger kids they may not want to be yet quite saving for a car or anything like that but a lot of them might pay for their own uh, basketball equipment or their own shoes or video their own video games and things like that so um, yeah always a good idea to be putting money aside um, as much as you possibly can for, for those sort of things so thanks for that Jen all right we'll go second question here how do I go about setting up a bank account? So for, for some of our younger athletes, I guess, that maybe uh, are just starting to receive an income through casual employment or part-time employment. Everybody needs to have a bank account. Um, it's important that you set up an account that's probably where the bank is not too far away from you 
also look at the accessibility. Can I have it as an app on my phone? Can I look and and see how what's going on in my account? Um, a lot of like when you start your first job, everybody's going to ask you your account details, and most people or young people or even general people um, don't know it off by heart. So my little advice, little tip that I do say is put it in your phone as a contact, but name it something that only you know. So you shouldn't actually save it in your phone, but it's a really good idea that you have it under something that nobody would recognise it and distort it a little bit. So you know, anywhere you go, if they need to have your account details, you can look at your phone and say, here they are. But make sure that most banks now have apps and they're on your phone and they are safe. You will need identification like Medicare card or, or a license or birth certificate. There are so many points you need to establish an account. Um, it's best to go online and check what they need and make sure you have that yep. available. But yeah, I would even suggest setting up two accounts, one for your savings and one for your everyday transactions. Yep. Yeah, no, that's good advice. Excellent. All right. So we'll go on to the next question, Jen. Thank you for that. Uh, so this question is around budget. Um, what sort of budget would you recommend our maybe our junior athletes setting up and and uh, and how how do you go about setting it up? What's the best way to do it? How would you sort of structure it or advise them to structure These it? These days we all have iPhones or you know Androids or whatever they're called. Uh, it's good to have it on your phone. Yep. You need to have your phone that um, pull down an app. Um, 2020, the eight top ones, and it's been probably the top one in the last three years, is called Mint, M-I-N-T. And that, we set it up. It can link to your accounts. The most important thing is, is that you trace where your income's coming from and what your spending is. Because yep. the only way for you to have control is you to know what am I getting and where is it going? And even a lot of adults struggle with that and still don't have budgets. Um, but I recommend that the earlier, the younger you start and take control of that, the better for you. <coughs> yep, so you'd, you'd, you'd recommend probably, well, the best bet for now would probably be to use the app just because of its functionality Absolutely. and ability to link Mint in with has, bank accounts. It's been the top app probably in the last three years. Okay, cool. And nice it cool. automatically records what you're spending, what you're doing, and you can set you can even go back into details of where it went, what happened, yep. what were my fees. Everything like that is really important. It's really important that you know what's coming in and how you're spending it. It's, if you don't know that, then you have no control over your own money. Yep. And that advice doesn't even go for all the young ones. It goes for everybody. And unfortunately, I would say more than 50% of people do not budget. Yep. They yeah, live definitely. week to week, which is very difficult. Yep. All right, terrific. All right, thank you for that. That's a good one. Mint is a good one to look up. All right, uh, this one, I'm sure you could take a lot of time on this one, but probably just the basics for our, um, for our, our younger members. How, how do I prepare for having to do a tax return? What, what are some tips for that? Luckily, these days, it is so simple. Everybody these days needs to set up a MyGov account. Yep. You set up a MyGov account and you really need to, everybody by this day has to have one. Mm -hmm. um, when you have the MyGov account, you can include ATO, you can include Medibank, 
you can include Centrelink. They're all linked together as one. Because let's say I do a payroll today, the same minute your money hits the account, the same minute taxation office notes what you've been paid, what's been deducted. So everything's there. So when it comes to tax time, you log into that. And especially when you're young and not earning a, a lot, you can go there and do your tax return. Now, I'm not saying don't go to an accountant, but at young age, you don't need to. It, it, it sort of gives you step-by-step -step guide what to do. It's also really good to ask questions to people that are a little bit more experienced in it and saying, what can I claim? Yep. Like if you wear a uniform that has a logo, you can claim for laundry. If you need, you know, you might buy pens or pencils or a book or a diary. There's certain things you can claim without having receipts. So, I do preparing, I'd say definitely have a MyGov account. And then I would say, let's say if you're under 18, I would definitely try and just go for and do the tax return yourself. If you have any questions, you can always email me at any time and I'm happy to give advice, different situations. You know, it's very individual how people have their finance but in general just have the mic up app and you'll be okay okay no that's good good advice that that has been handy linking all those accounts together on my gov i did that Absolutely. recently superannuation and all that sort of stuff kids, yeah. the kids may not need to worry about that just yet but they might need to if they're if they're working a lot after hours but um it is pretty handy all right, uh, next question. What are your, do you have any tips for saving money or what are your best tips for saving money? Um, okay, right I, have, I have a couple of things there. The best one is, is that you can say to your employer, um, when you pay me, I want you to put 10% of what I earn into a different account. Hence, I said before, set up two accounts. Yep. One saving, one you use every day and make the saving one something that you don't see on your app. Yep. So make it hidden. And you have to save money. Let's say you're at the age where, okay, I'm gonna to have to pay my fees or something. I know what they're gonna be. So this much per week I'll set aside, or again, for travel, whatever, just say you can nominate 10% and you'll never see it in your account. It would but it will still be in a different account mm. for tough times. Yep. The other option, and again, this is general advice that I used to give my kids, most young people don't earn enough to pay tax, mm. but you can opt and say to your employer, I want you to take $10 a week in tax. Even if you're not supposed to pay it, but the point is, when it comes to doing your tax return, that money's sitting there for you and you'll get it. So it's almost like a savings that you cannot access until you do your tax return. I found that quite handy with, you know, if you're undisciplined and you like to spend your money like we all do. <laughs> but if you put it in there, you cannot touch it until you do your tax return. And when you're looking forward to that, you go, I know, and you'll do it quick. I'll do my tax return. And I know I've put $10 a week aside. I'm going to get at least $520 back. Yeah. So to me, that's a little bit of a way that you cannot access it until tax time. But it's so exciting. People get excited at tax time. What do I get? What do I get? If you don't pay tax, you get nothing. But if you are easily spending money, I would say just volunteer to pay some. Yep. 
Yeah, no, that's a good, that's a really good tip, actually. I used to love that as a kid when I wasn't earning much yeah. money. I was still paying a bit of tax and then come tax time, I'd just magically get money back in my account. Yeah. The best thing ever. And just up it a little bit. Say I want an extra $10 or, yeah. you know, $5, an extra something. Yeah. You're guaranteed to get it back, absolutely. You don't want to be doing your tax and all of a sudden owe them money because that's what you don't want. Yeah. No, absolutely. No, oh, terrific. Thanks, Jen. That's good. Um, I think that is it for our actual formal questions that were sent in this evening. Um, let me just double check and make sure there's no questions in the chat. So I'm just having issues with my mouse here. Uh, were there any other tips or any other points you wanted to absolutely. chat about? Absolutely. One one big thing is, and again, like I said, have your bank account details in your phone as a contact. Yep. I would also suggest have your tax phone number in your phone as a contact. But again, make sure that nobody could just look at it and say, oh, I've got their tax phone number. Yep. So make it under something that you know, like, um, I don't know, call it Wally or call it gym or whatever but yeah. everywhere you go you're gonna need your tax phone number and as far as super goes when you start your first job they always have um a super fund that you just can join keep record of it don't join three or four jobs which you probably will and they're all open accounts for you in different ones because each of them charges fees and it might not mean a lot to you at the moment, but it's best to, if you've got one, stick with one or ask someone to recommend one and join it and keep those details somewhere in a notebook or somewhere in your phone, because you're gonna be asked those questions. And one other thing is um, I've come across 15 year olds and 40 year olds when you fill in your tax declaration form, which gives your employer your tax phone number, most people don't know how to fill out the form. And it's really important if it's your only job, then tick tax-free threshold. Yep. If you have a second job, then tick it for the highest incoming job. Um, most people get that wrong and then their tax too high. I mean, you'll get it back at your tax return, but it's very important that you know you can only claim tax free for one job, not a second. Doesn't matter if you're not going to earn it, you cannot claim it from two jobs. Yep. That's how it works. But any tax you pay, you will get back. Uh, that's good. Excellent. All right. Well, fantastic. That's great advice. Thank you very much for that, Jen. I, I learned a bit there, which I um, <laughs> self-confessed I need to learn a little bit more about budgeting and finance. And uh, there's no better time than now to um, to upskill in that area and start to think about those things. And yeah. um, for our young athletes, again, anyone that's tuning in now or, or watching this recording back, um, it's never too early to start thinking about this stuff and, and educating yourself on these topics. And um, Jen, thank you. You've given us um, a, a lot of information, but also some great resources for myself, but also for our uh, for our junior athletes to go away and um, take a look at and start to think about again if they if they are going to take up you know a casual employment or part time employment after school or on the weekends, and then they they're, they're equipped with the skills that. Um, they'll know what to do with their money. They'll know where it's going and they'll be able to start planning, which sets them up really well for the future. And, and that's what we want to get them starting to think about a little bit now and into the future. And again, so I'm available at any time when they come to a situation, if they want to ask questions of, should I go part-time or casual? What's the difference? There is a lot of other questions out there, but, you know, if anyone needs to contact, you know, they have us yep. on FDBA. We're here to help. Yeah, that's right. Yep. And Jen is, uh, yeah, Jen, obviously a part of our team at the at the FDBA office. So um, I'll make her email available. Um, if, if anyone has any questions after the fact, um, obviously we're all working remotely at the moment, but we're all still very active and um, yeah, Jen always, uh, always willing to help and um, 
thank you very much for your time um, tonight. Again, Jen, we really appreciate you jumping on and, and hope that everyone enjoyed this. I certainly did and, and, and took a lot from it. So um, we will we'll leave it there. But if anyone has any questions, um, please feel free to contact me or we'll, we'll upload um, Jen's details to, to this session as well and, and when we upload the, the questions. Um, so feel free to shoot her any questions if you have any um, at any stage. So all right, we'll finish things up there. Thank you very much again, Jen. Have a, a great Sunday evening. Um, I'm sure I'll talk to you tomorrow. Yeah. And um, thank you again for jumping on. All right. Thanks, Jared. Excellent. Thank you, guys. Bye. All right. Bye.